Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12 says, O oh, our God, will you not exercise judgment upon them? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. I don't know what situation that you're in this morning, but God is wanting to capture your attention this morning. See, your situation has captured your attention. The headlines have captured your attention. Relationships, pain, sorrow, worry, doubt, and fear is all captured your attention. But God says you can't fight this battle on your own. It is not for you to fight. It is mine, says God. This battle is mine. Stand still, God says. He says that in this chapter. Stand still. Put your eyes on me. I am the one who will answer. See, we have made God so small. We've relegated him to a little bit of time, a little slot of time on Sundays. And he's saying, no, put your eyes on me. Let me fight this battle today, tomorrow, the next day. Stand back and watch and see the victory of God. So he's wanting us right now to just focus on him, to put our attention fully on him. Put away the distractions right now in your mind, if it's in your hand, if it's your phone, whatever it is. And let God have this time, this precious, small amount of time. Because you need to focus on him. You don't have the answers in yourself. You cannot make it happen yourself. But God can. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship just a little bit longer. Get your focus where it needs to be. Let God come in and fight this battle. You stand still and see the salvation and the victory of God. Come on and sing it this morning like your life depends on it. Give Him glory. you, God. Lord, we just give you place today. Lord, we focus on you this morning. We put our eyes on you. My God, you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Lord God. Lord, you have not brought us this far just to leave us, Lord God, but Lord, you are active and you are present and you are so powerful, God. And I just pray that every person in the sound of my voice, God, would be encouraged, Lord, that hope would be put back in God, that they would see how powerful you are, how big you are, and my God, hope would rise again in them, Father God. Lord, that just 
folks hope in you God would rise again and I thank you my God that you are moving in this place Lord that you will have your way God and we just give you all the glory honor and praise in Jesus name amen come on worship him this morning praise him shout out to him it's okay to make noise in the house of God come on thank you Jesus thank you Lord Amen. Amen. Well, hey, greet somebody this morning. I'm so glad to see all of you. Greet somebody that you do not know or that you haven't seen in a long time. I just want to welcome our online audience this morning. Thank you so much. If you need prayer today, just please reach out in the comments and we would love to pray for you. But thank you for taking time on your Sunday morning to spend with us today. How's everybody doing today? You guys are looking awesome. So glad to see you. My friend Kimberly's in the house. I haven't seen her in a long time. And we've got Dean and Bethany in Avalon from Syracuse, New York, who might be coming to join us permanently pretty soon. That's our prayer. So be in prayer for them that uh, God's going to open all the doors they need and work everything out for them. But uh, we're excited. I've known Bethany since she was um, smaller than Avalon. So <laughs> she's been in our family a long time. Amen. All right. Well, just a couple of announcements this morning. Um, Shoe boxes are due when? 21st is the last day to bring your shoe box. And okay. The 19th, we're packing shoe boxes. Okay, so the Friday night, the 19th at Rock Solid Faith, they're packing the shoe boxes. They have a lot of them because we had like $1,600 giving to this. Um, so they went shopping yesterday, had a great time. The receipt was twice as tall as Sarah, at least. So <laughs> yeah. But, um,. <laughs> So that's a blessing to be able, if you want to get involved in that, please see Sarah. If you can't find her, see Gina, and they're going to give you all the information that you need. And um, coming up, I, I made actually the flyer, but our screen's not working today. But ladies, we have an event coming up, and it's a cookie swap. Anybody ever been to a cookie swap, cookie exchange? Well, I haven't either. This is going to be my first one. And so let me just find the information here because I can't get it up on the screen. But it is going to be November 20th from 11 to 1. It's going to be right here. And Gina is going to give you all the information on that. Please see her afterwards to sign up or to talk about it. But it's going to be fun. It's just a time to fellowship, to make relationships. We have a lot of new ladies coming in, and they need to get to know people. And you all need fellowship too, the ones that have been here for a long time. We just need to spend that time together. And we get to – now I'm ex I am expecting everybody to make all gluten-free cookies. You know that, right? Every single person right girls only gluten-free or just don't come that's just gonna be tell them that's one of the requirements Gina you know <laughs> I'll provide the flour amen all right we'll come out on Wednesdays for prayer come out on Fridays for rock solid faith and um, just get involved wherever you can God is moving it's awesome we're excited amen all right well let's just go into generosity Thank you, Lord. I had a scripture, but I didn't, I didn't screenshot it, so now I can't find the one that I had. But I was looking in, in Proverbs where it talks about a man who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. When we give to others, when we pour out into others' lives, when we give to them of our finances, our time, whatever it is, we're going to be taken care of. All of our needs are going to be taken care of. And the Bible says in another scripture, not only just taken care of scantily, but he pours it out, he presses it down, he shakes it together and makes it abundantly running over. Amen? So when you give into the house of God, today you are sowing into other people's lives not just this ministry not just to keep the doors open but other people's lives that are going to come in that are going to get set free healed and delivered amen so father god i thank you for all these tremendous givers every single gift god i thank you that you multiply it back to the giver lord that you are blessing their lives blessing their obedience and we thank you for always meeting every need in this house father in jesus name amen and you can give by givelify chase quick pay uh credit card, whatever you want to do, we, we got it all. Amen. You ready, PT? Come on up. Give it up for PT. Come on. Thank you, Michael. Let's see how that works. How do I sound? How do I sound? How do I sound? Duh. That was the big finish. the old metalhead in me. Well, I've been delivered from all that. Yeah, old habits are hard to break, Pam. You know those things. 
So here's the deal. We don't have a screen, but how many people know Jesus didn't need a screen? He didn't need projectors. He didn't, he didn't need all that stuff. And still power and anointing and glory and stuff just flowed, right? So that's what's going to happen today. And I don't know whether you know it or not. If, if not, let me just be the first to tell you, your Here's my Kentucky accent. You're fixing to go into a new season in life. Okay? You're fixing to. Okay? Get ready for it because it's on the way. Know why? Because I'm moving into a new season. I'm not talking about the natural season. I'm talking about a spiritual season that's going to change your life. A new spiritual season that's beginning in your life that's going to take you into your future. It's going to put you in places you only dreamed of. You never thought. Dude, let me tell you something. Six months from now, you're going to look back. You're going to go, how the junk did I get here? Well, here's how you got there. The Holy Ghost swooped in, pulled you out of that place that you're in right now, and took you into your future because you're getting ready to do some things that he has pre-programmed into you. It's not like, am I going to, do I, do I have what I need to do it? You were pre-programmed before you ever showed up on the planet. And God wrote it down in his book so that you would have everything you need to get everything you need to go everywhere you need to go and do everything you need to do when you get there. Is that okay? So get ready. It's on the way. You're moving in a new season. You're moving toward your destiny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. <laughs> I'm telling you, God's getting ready to do some things in your life that are going to blow you and everybody else away. Listen, when Peter walked down the street and people started getting healed, they never thought that a shadow was going to do what was happening in their life, but it was happening because the anointing that was flowing through Peter. But guess what? Peter didn't start out in that spot. He started out in a whole different spot, and he had to adjust his mindset, and he had to get into a place that he wasn't so that God could use him in the place that he was. So you're moving into a new season. And you're going to breathe life into people who need life. And you're going to impart healing to people who need healing. And you're going to speak to devils, man, and they're going to scream when they come out of people. But here's the caveat. You can't get there from here. Well, what do you mean I can't get there from here? This is where I am, and you're telling me I'm going into a new season. How the junk am I going to get there? Here's what I want you to do. Right now, all gritty and kind of John Wayne-esque. You know how? Yeah, yeah. Some of you guys might not even know who John Wayne is, but all gritty and John Wayne-esque. You know how John Wayne would stand there and kind of go like this? Well, all John Wayne-esque and gritty, look at your neighbor and say this, let it go. Come on, not like that. Get a little gritty and with a little bit of sternness and the spirit in you, look at right at, look them right in the eye and go, let it go. That wasn't a real good, that wasn't a real good uh, accent on my part, was it? <laughs> Give it up. Now look at the neighbor on the other side of you, because this is how it's going to happen. Ready? This is how it's going to happen. 
Look at the neighbor on the other side of you, and all stern like, like you got all the authority in heaven and earth at your disposal. Look right at them and say, burn it up. Burn it up. <laughs> See, because think about this. Go with me. Just go with me. Go with me. Here, let, let's get that whiteboard up here, Phil. Let me just draw a quick picture for you. Everybody give my buddy Phil a big hand. How many people know that he's a vessel of the Holy Ghost? He's going to do great things. He's already done great things. God's already done great things in him. And he's just beginning in the beginning stages of what God's going to do. Now, I'm going to draw something. I'm, gonna, I, I, I'm trying to navigate this right here, okay? So if I sound kind of like, eh, 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 I'm trying to navigate it. But what I'm, I'm telling you is God's getting ready to do some things in your life that are going to smoke you. In this new season, he's going to begin to do things that are going to blow you away. But here's the deal. Here's what I want you to do. Ah, the market. That was Grinch-esque, wasn't it? The marker. Go with me. Quickly, just because I don't have a clue where I'm going right now. I got plenty of notes and I got plenty of stuff. But I want the Holy Ghost to speak to you instead of me speaking to you. And I want to show you, give you a little, so that we can get into the place... Anybody ever heard of the Tabernacle of Moses? Tabernacle of Moses, rough, very rough, like totally rough, right? Like really, really rough. It kind of like looked like that, kind of, sort of. And out here was, it's kind of like that. So we, 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 we tend to draw it. Eh, I can't really draw it because my marker's dying. Oh, it's the board. There were three places, three spots in the tabernacle of Moses. What were they? The outer courts, the holy place, and the holy of holies. Where was the presence of God? In the holy of holies. And what was out here? Anybody know? Let me see if this one will work. Oh, this is a beautiful one. So this is a holy place, and this is the holy of holies, right? And the, and the Ark of the Covenant sat right there, and the fire of God was right there. But what was this? was the altar that the people brought the sacrifice once a year and burned up on that altar to get the sin of their family atoned for, right? So the Holy Ghost started speaking to me this week, and he said, here's what, now this is a personal, personal thing. The Holy Ghost started speaking to me, and he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take this and this and this and this and this and this, and I want you to burn it up on the altar of my presence. Because to get into my presence, you're going to have to get rid of this and this and this and this. And I went, I thought I'd taken care of that. And he goes, well, here's the laundry list that I've got for you. You want to deal with my laundry list or you want to deal with yours? Because, see, me being a human being and walking around on two legs and thinking like I think, I tend to like to look really good. And I tend to like to just be all that. And so I'll take stuff in my life and I'll sweep it under the rug, sweep it under the rug, sweep it under the rug. Listen, I went all the way back to my kindergarten days and my kindergarten looked like this. It was in a church in a little town called Sherburne, New York. And there were two kindergarten classes that ran simultaneously, and I was in one of them, and I don't remember who was in the other one. But there was a guy in my class, his name was Jimmy. You know, you know how Jimmy is, right? Well, we went out to get, and I'm, here, I'm confessing, okay? I'm confessing, because in a minute... 
Here's what I want you to do as I'm talking. I want you to run through your mind, and I want you to come up with a list of things that have been holding you back out of God's presence, and I want you to be willing to put them on the altar of his presence and burn those babies up. Because if you don't let those things go, you're not going to be able to get into the future that God has for you because those things have become spiritual anchors that have held you back your whole stinking life. And we tend to let them be anchors because they're ugly and they're not cute and they're not fun and I don't want them to come back up. And if I just leave them there, nobody will see them and I can put a real nice covering over them. And that can look all cute, and nobody will know they're there. Well, nobody has to know they're there because they become anchors to you, and they keep you out of here. And our goal is to get to our next season. And we can't get to those seasons ongoing how many know there's going to be a season after the next one? There's going to be one after that, and one after that, and one after that. And God's going to tell you what they are as they show up. So God said, here's the laundry list. I want you to deal with your insecurity. And I went, mm-hmm. Did you ever do that? God shows up and tells you something you didn't really want to deal with, and you go, "Mm -hmm." because I felt like I was all secure and junk. I felt like I my security level was, you know, nine, nine and a half. I'm pretty secure. I've heard my wife tell everybody I'm pretty level, I'm pretty secure, I'm pretty... So she's the problem because she's talked me into some stuff in my life that really wasn't true. (laughs) And God shows up and says, I need you to deal with the insecurity in your life. And I said, what insecurity? And he goes, the insecurity, dude. You need to start dealing with insecurity. And I said, I don't. Because on the surface, I didn't have any. On the surface, it wasn't an issue because I've learned how to deal in life. But in the spirit realm, if I don't deal with my insecurity, it's going to keep me out of my next season. And it's going to become an anchor to what God wants to do. So I said, okay, I'll bite. What insecurity? And he said, remember that time right there? And how about this time right here, and this time right here, and that time? Remember that? Remember that? That was a biggie. Remember that? How about this? How about that? How about this? I went again. Mm -hmm. Because all those areas in my life created an anchor of insecurity that's going to keep me out of my future if I don't deal with it. And a guy named here, here's where it started. Ready? Ready? Here's where it started. Confession time. I'm confessing. I know all y'all don't have any problem with this, but I'm just telling you where I'm at. I'm telling you what I'm doing and where I'm going because I'm going into my future. I am. Now, you don't have to go. You get to, but you can't go like you are. You're going to have to deal with some stuff in your life that has been keeping you out of your future, too. And that stinks. So I said, okay, I'll bite. Where's the insecurity come from? Because I get that, and I get that, but it gets kind of fuzzy right in there. Where does that insecurity come from? And he goes, remember that day that you were walking out that driveway to get on the bus? Remember that guy named Jimmy? And I went, yeah. He said, remember what Jimmy said to you? Now, here's what Jimmy said to me. Ready? Here's what Jimmy said. I may as well get raw. Right? I may as well. Here's, here's, here's reality. 
Our email address is treadhead6. Treadheads. Know why? Because when my kids are born, they got a treadhead. Big heads are, yeah, when the kid grows into them and they're all great looking and junk. But when they're born, treadhead six. Well, she doesn't have any single, there's no problems in her life at all. Except me. So when I was in kindergarten, you know, it's like the Grinch. Cindy Lou Who hasn't grown into her nose yet. Right? Well, here, I've got this tread head in kindergarten. And I'm standing, this is like 19... 42, you stinking dinosaur. I think it was like around 1967. This is how far back this went. Okay, this is how far back my insecurity has gone. Now, you wouldn't know to look at me that I was dealing with insecurity. And I wasn't on the surface, but under here, which translated into another place and 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 another place. place. So here's what Jimmy said. Ready? Four words. Four words that came out of Jimmy's mouth that changed my future. Ready? Because I think Jimmy's all that. You know, you have people that you, you think are really cool, you know, and you like to hang out with and all's well. Well, here's what Jimmy said. He looked right. I remember it like it was yesterday. And those Areas and those places that God wants to deliver you from in your life. You can remember the day. You can remember the time. You can remember names. You can remember the words. They're permanently burned into your. Well, guess what? God's getting ready to unburn those babies. Because you're getting ready to burn some things up on the altar of his presence that's going to get you into his presence. Stop keeping you out. Jimmy said this, four words, looked right at me. I mean, you know how you, everybody line up, I got to go walk, and the bus is sitting out there, here, I'm painting a picture. The bus is sitting out there, and we're walking out, right? Single file, but you're in two lines, I guess that wouldn't be single file, would it? And I'm, and Jimmy's right there, come here, come here, Jimmy. Come here, here, Jimmy. Jimmy. We got to, we got to face the, right? So you're Jimmy. And I'm me, and we're walking the, to go get on the bus. So we're walking along and walking along and walking along, and all's well, right? And we're walking. I'm happy as a clam. It's 1967. I got no problems in my life whatsoever. There's nothing going on that's going to. And Jimmy looks right at me, and he goes, big head, little body. Four stinking words that changed my future because the spirit, now I didn't know that's what it was at the time, but the spirit of insecurity showed up in my life right there and permanently put me on a road to change my future. Thanks, Jimmy. You were a jerk back then. Hope you've got better. And so insecurity started in 1967 in my life, right there in that driveway of that Methodist church. There's only one Methodist church in the town of Sherburn. Right there in that driveway, insecurity started in my life, and God decided that I needed to do something with it this week. So what do I got to do? I got to put it on the altar of his presence and let that sucker burn is what I've got to do. So how did I do it? Okay, I'll bite. How did you do it? Because what do I do? Because churchy folk are notorious for telling you you got to do something, not telling you how to fix it. Right? Pretty easy. When I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, what did I do? 
I spoke. When God created everything, what did he do? He spoke. So here's what I did. I called that thing out by name. Now, I'm, in this, I'm dealing in the spirit realm right now. I'm not dealing in the natural. I'm not feeling insecurity in my life at all at that point. This was about Monday morning about 9.30. I'm not feeling a bit of insecurity. And when I spoke to the spirit of insecurity, see, here's the thing. The Jews believe that if you can name it, you control it. And I didn't feel jack. But God says it's there, way down under there. And he said, I need to deal with that thing before I'm ever going to get here because I need to put it on there and I need to light a fire under that, baby. And I need to let that thing burn because if I don't let it burn, I'm going to get burnt and I'm never going to get here. And that represents my future. So I spoke it by name. I said, spirit of insecurity, I put you on the altar of his presence right now, and I light that match, burn it up. And when I said that, I could feel it leave. Now, you can say, well, I don't believe that. Well, I don't care. I felt it leave. And as soon as I did that, you know what happened? He came up with another something I had to deal with. Now, watch. In but, and you say, I've been living just great. I've been living just great till now. Well, then how come you haven't got past that spot or that one or that one or that spot right there or maybe that one? Now watch. In between the holy place and the holy of holies, there was a veil, Right? Big curtain, big thick one. And you'll tell me, here I'll tell you where. You can look in Matthew chapter 27, verse 51, Mark 15, verse 39, Luke 23, verse 47. And it says this, when Jesus died, the temple veil was rent from top to bottom And we as churchy folk will say, and it allows us into the presence of God any time we want. You've used those words. And I'm going to tell you something right now. To get from here to here, the qualifications never changed. And so a whole lot of people are out here in the entire encampment of Israel knowing that they need to burn up some stuff in their life, knowing that they need to get into the Holy of Holies where God can burn up those things in their life that they've been dealing with their whole life. And so they'll step through this gate and they'll stand right about here. And then they'll come over here and then they'll come back here and then they'll walk over to there and then they'll come over here and they'll watch everybody else burn their stuff up. They'll watch everybody else burning up the stuff in their life because those people want to get into here but the qualifications to get through that veil and into that place have never changed and I, not I, not we, but the church is stinking full of people who will not burn up what's in their life to get into the presence of God, but they sure want to get healed. They sure want to get delivered. They sure want to get full of the Holy Ghost because it's fun. Right? Psalm 16, verse 11 says, You, 
thou, it's my King James Version, thou will show me the path of life. Anybody need more life in their life? That's God's life. Whew, I'm out, I'm out of shape. You will show me the path of life. That's his life. Now listen to this. In your presence, this is what David said. David knew a thing or two. In your presence is fullness of joy. Anybody need any more joy in their life? Well, to get more joy in your life, it's in his presence. But guess what? The qualifications to get into his presence have never changed. And the farther you get into the holy of holies, the less of you can go with you. And so if God's been speaking to you, or like he did speak to me, about some things in your life that happened in 1967, you stinking dinosaur, it's because he's got a great plan for my life, but I can't get to the plan until I deal with the stuff. But boy, do I not want to deal with the stuff. I want joy. I want God's life. I'm all churchy and junk. I got to feel good. I want to dance around, and I want to sing and we need revival. Guess what? You can have revival if you'll get rid of all the stuff in your life. And when we, as the church, have you heard this lately? The church needs to stand up in the middle of this pandemic. You heard that? And it's true. Hear my voice? It's true. True. That wasn't very John Wayne-esque, was it? But the problem is the church doesn't want to deal with their baggage. They want to go on the trip, but they don't want to deal with their baggage because it's just messy, it's ugly, it's not cute, it's not fun, it's just not right. Mayor Mayhew, not pleasant, not right. Right? Mayor Mayhew, you know who I'm talking about. So in his presence, in your presence, is fullness of joy. Notice it's in his presence, not yours. It's in his presence, not yours, not your wife's, not your husband's, not the guy at work's. It's in his presence, but I can't get into his presence because I'm still dealing with something that I have that, that, that took over my life in 1967 by one guy who spoke four words. So go through the Rolodex. The old timer in me had Rolodex, you know, the, which tells you how old I am. 1967, they had Rolodexes on the, on the desk. Go through the Rolodex of your mind. And stop at the, pl and I guarantee you something. God wants to remove something from your life today so that you can get into your future today. But that thing has been an anchor to your life for maybe, like me, years. You know what happened right after I burned up my insecurity on the altar of his presence? You know what happened? He came up with another thing I had to deal with. Junk. Because when I sat down to pray, I didn't have a single problem in life. There was no problems in my life whatsoever. So you know what I did? <sighs> you know what that was? Jealousy. I didn't feel jealous. I don't know anybody that I'm jealous of. But he said it was there. Well, I do know, I do know, anybody know what, remember King Saul? King Saul, the people decided they needed a king. You know what they set into office because they figured out they knew better than God? Insecurity and jealousy. That's what they put in office over them. And so here... God says, jealousy goes right along with that. And I went, I got the spirit of Saul in my life? Insecurity and jealousy. Insecurity and jealousy 
leads to accusation and slander. So if I don't clean up my insecurity and jealousy, eventually I'm going to start talking about people and discrediting them. Because I don't like it done to me. So go through that Rolodex. What's God speaking to you? I bet you a dollar he's speaking to you about something right now. See, this isn't pleasant, is it? It's not fun. And we'd like to come to church every week and hope and pray nobody sees our stuff so that we can just move on with life. And that's great, and we can do that, and we can do it for the rest of our life. But we don't get to where God's plan is to take us. You will show me the path of life in your presence, not my presence, in your presence, not my wife's presence, in your presence, not my kid's presence, in your presence, not my job, in your presence, not my finances, in your presence is fullness of joy. And listen to this. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Anybody need any more pleasure in their life? I could use some more pleasure. There's some areas in my life that I don't really like. But it's not up to me. It says so right there. In your right hand. See, I've been trying to fix things in my life. All my life ain't been fixed because it's been my hand trying to fix them. Instead of me putting, taking my hand, putting those things on the altar of his presence, allowing him to burn them up so I can get into my future. It was that easy, and I just wouldn't do it. it stinketh when God makes clear to you something that you're just like, man, I wish I had I wish I I wish I'd have known that. And he goes, should have asked. Right? Mm. Here, let me give you a, uh, for all you Bible scholars. Now, this is, now this is, listen, I am not a theologian. I am not a Bible scholar, okay? But we're going to start heading down the road of consecration in your life. Because I'm dealing with consecration in mine. It ain't pretty, and it ain't fun, and it ain't pleasant, and it ain't nice, and it ain't cute. It's not pleasant, it's not right. But it's necessary if I'm going to get into my future. It's necessary. And that stinks that it's necessary. But the whole church, listen, the whole church can't stand up because they got so much baggage and anchors holding them back that half of them will never get into their future because they won't change the way they think. They won't deal with baggage in their life. And so God can't, listen, remember, there are qualifications to get in here. And God can't change. And so he's not going to change the qualifications. He'll let me come in church, sit on the front row, and he'll let me praise and worship and glorify him, and he'll let me look all good and go through the motions, and he'll let me move in the Holy Ghost. He'll let me get into the gifts and flow in the gifts because he's put gifts in me, and the gifts and callings are without repentance, and I love that because whatever I'm flowing in, I'm going to keep flowing in because God's got put it in me, and I'm just going to flow with it. But the problem is this. Without burning some stuff up on the altar, I might not qualify. And you go, well, what do you mean? If you're moving in the Holy Ghost, if you've got the gifts flowing through you, well, correct me if I'm wrong. I can't give you the address right now. But Jesus said, many will come before me, and they'll say, Lord, didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we prophesy in your name what's he gonna say get the junk away from me i never knew you so the biggest part of me to qualify to get in here i refuse to do because i love moving in the holy ghost i love dancing and singing i love the presence of god but this is strictly off limits dum 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 Sucks, doesn't it? That just stinks to think that we're not perfect. Well, you wonder why. Listen, (laughs) Jesus took 12 guys, changed the whole entire world. Know why? Because when he showed up on the planet, 
he changed the atmosphere around them to such an extent that they couldn't stay out here anymore. They couldn't stay here. They could not stay here. They couldn't even stay here. They had to do whatever they had to do to get in there like there was no tomorrow. Well, how do you do that? We're going to talk about that. Because no, no use of me telling you that that's where God wants you to be and not tell you how to get there. So I, can't, I don't have time to do it today. But as we go, we're going to start talking about how do I get in there? How, what are the qualifications? How do I get there? What does God look at? Because, you know, I figured, you know, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, you will. You got your fire insurance. All's good. It's all good. It's all good. You're going to heaven. But if you want to get in here, the qualifications have not changed. And so now we've got a problem. Do I want to deal with the things I need to deal with to qualify in his presence is fullness of joy, not mine? I'm just as saved. Listen, um, Unto the church of God, which is in Corinth. This is Paul talking. To them, listen, listen, listen. To them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints. And here's the kicker. With all that in every place, call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Didn't say they were all in the same place. Said they were personally in. You with me? So the guy out here in the outer encampment of Israel is just as saved as the high priest who went into the Holy of Holies once a year, just as saved. But the guy who is out here and is called to be in here or in here and doesn't feel like qualifying, just as saved. To them that are sanctified, sanctification, consecration, pretty much the same thing, except here's just a quick little thing. Like in Genesis 2, maybe verse 3, God, um, um, he's talking about the day God sanctified the seventh day. Okay, called it holy because it was holy. It didn't have to get holy. It was holy because it was pure. Okay, consecration's a process. Consecration's a process. Um, Revelation 19, we'll probably get into that sometime. It's talking about the bride of Christ, and John is writing it, and he says, The bride has made herself ready. You're the bride of Christ. My question is, have you made yourself ready for the for the wedding have you made yourself ready have you because listen think about that the bride has made herself ready she didn't start out ready it was a process it was a process and now i'm a little ticked off because i've got this revelation that the process probably is never going to stop yes but the more process i go through the more law of process I invite into my life, the closer and, closer and 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 closer I get to here, and the farther and farther and farther. See, this out here, I don't want to be out here. This is not where I want to be. This is not good. This out here is not where I want to be. I want to be as close to here as I can get. But it's a process to make myself ready for the wedding supper of the lamb so here's my and and here here's my challenge to you don't run from this do not sweep this under the rug 
Do not just walk away and forget about it. Do not. You want the presence of God in your life, but the presence of God comes in your life by you getting into the presence. So run through the Rolodex of your mind. What is in my life that is keeping me from his presence? What in my life have I been living with? What in my life have I been tolerating? There's a good word. That the devil that might have brought to you in 1967, you stinking dinosaur, that you've been living with all your life and has been keeping you out of his presence and his fullness of joy and his pleasures forevermore. And you've been tolerating it. Because I'm telling you, there's something. He's not going to bring this season to me and leave you unchanged. It's not going to happen. And I don't know this. You know, I don't know this. But sometimes I think it here. Let me just get like way the junk out there on a limb, okay? I'm on thin ice as it is. Let me get way the junk out there. You don't have to come out. I'm just going to make a statement right now. God does things and doesn't ask me for my permission, and he doesn't ask me what I think about it. I've got like a strange idea, and you can, you can disagree with me. I'm fine with that. One thing COVID-19 did is created an atmosphere for division. That, it did that better than anything else. I, I accuse you, you accuse me, I got a problem with you, you got a problem with me. Created division more than anything else. I got this strange idea just flying around, you know, and this is not thus saith the Lord, not even close, okay? It's just something that I thought about. Maybe God used COVID-19. How many people know that time is speeding up? We're headed toward the marriage, man. We're headed there, and we're headed there fast. And if I don't get myself right, away from me, you evildoers. A little bit. <laughs> I can't even say that. Away from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. I don't want to hear that. Is God using COVID-19 to sift? his people is it because things really started to happen didn't they some churches died some churches disappeared some churches are stinking just growing and going and living and full of life what's the difference what's the difference maybe God's using that great divider figure out who his people really are. And one sure way to get into here and not stay out here or out here or out here or even out here is to get rid of the things that divide me from his presence so I can make a beeline right into my future. So you can make a beeline right into yours. Can we stand? Here, I'm going to create a little atmosphere. Because I look around the room. I look around the room. And yeah, if I were to say, I would say that everybody here has a personal relationship with Jesus. So that's not even my point for an altar call right now. 
My point for an altar call is, what have you been tolerating in your life that keeps you from your future, that keeps you from your joy, that keeps you from his pleasure? How about that? I'm misspeaking. That's keeping you from his joy, that's keeping you from his pleasures. That, because once you're there, his joy is your joy. His pleasure is your pleasure. So if God is speaking to you right now about something in your life that you need to put on the altar of his presence so that you can get into your future, I want to invite you down here to get into this current of God because there's one flowing right here. I promise you, God will meet you right here and he will take those things that you offer to him. See, he's not going to just take them. You're going to have to offer them up. You're going to have to offer them to him. Believe me, he'll take them. He will do all the work. He will put them on the altar of his presence. He will ignite that fire. He will burn those things up. And you walk away free, never dealing with those things again. Dude, that's good news. <laughs> That's good. that's good news. So I'm just going to open this altar. If you listen, and as always, if you need prayer, we want to pray for you. If you need encouragement, we want to encourage you. If you need um, you know, if there's sickness in your body, we will lay hands on you. We will push that sickness right out of your body. But I promise you, God's, he's been speaking to you for the last 30 minutes about what he wants you to offer on that altar. So if that's you, I'm pretty sure it is, because it's me. If that's you, this altar's open. If that's you... I want to confirm and encourage you that God has, as far as you can see, and as great as you ever want to be, and as much power and authority and anointing and healing and prosperity that you can even dream of, what he wants to put in your life is far beyond that. So why don't you spend a few minutes with God and let him do what you've been unable to.